Altered States was released on Christmas Day of 1980, the same month that John Lennon was killed by Mark David Chapman. The filming of Altered States started in March of 1979. The movie starred William Hurt as Dr. Edward Eddie Jessup, Blair Brown as Emily Jessup, Bob Balaban as Arthur Rosenberg, Charles Hayde as Mason Parrish with small parts played by Drew Barrymore and John Larquette. The movie was the first American movie made by Ken Russell. The movie begins with Eddie played by William Hurt in an isolation tank. I'm assuming that at this time that Arthur and Eddie are students in college. Arthur is the fellow scientist and friend of Eddie. Arthur is played by Bob Balaba, who later would be known to me as the NBC executive on Seinfeld. William Hurt and Bob Balaba hung out together to get the idea of closeness of their characters. After we get the opening of the isolation tank, we see how Eddie meets Emily. Eddie meets Emily at a party where you see the passing of drugs and the psychedelic music playing in the background. This scene sets up another way of people can experience an altered state of consciousness. I guess I'll be a little critical here. I really did not feel the passing of time at this point. I mean, number one, if seven years have passed in the next scene where Emily and Eddie have met, how come clothes and style haven't really changed in the movie? I am to assume that Eddie and Emily met in the early 70s, later we see seven years have passed and the only thing that we have to convince us that time has changed is that Eddie and Emily have two kids. Eddie and Emily date for like two months then they get married and you can tell that Eddie is not too happy about getting married of course. By this time they have become intimate in the relationship. I guess that's why I like to take things slow and let's not forget that Eddie is having hallucinations brought on I guess by a failed relationship between his dead father. I can see how that connects us with the world because parents are first real since of natural law which were we learn about the order of religion when we are young our parents can do no wrong I wish the film could be a little bit clearer here maybe this illusion that Eddie is having during sex could be a setup better than just repressed memories or maybe let's set up a scene of why Eddie is having the repressed memories I don't know no it just kind of slows the film down it's not really clear why he's hallucinating at this time of course we skip to seven years later and which again I do not feel that seven years have passed we learn that Eddie has kids and Emily is going to study animals in Africa because she's an anthropologist Eddie's going to study some mind-changing mushrooms with some Native Americans he takes this horrendous mulligan stew from the Native Americans if you will which will include his own blood he trips and supposedly kills a lizard while drinking the horrid contraption Keep in mind while hallucinating, Eddie sees Emily. I think the connection of the sex with Emily and this hallucination is important because it is more than just a science fiction thriller. Eddie is trying to find his place in life and we have to know that Emily is the key in finding this place. Eddie takes the Indian crap juice back to the States for analyzation. Eddie is back home and now wants to combine the Indian hoodoo voodoo juice and sleep deprivation tank that we had seen earlier. but with the new tank of course we get an introduction to one of my favorite characters and that character is Mason played by Charles Hay. I love this character I'm not too sure what Mason plays here but I like him he may or may not have a military background but Mason is a character that brings an anchor to a head in the clouds already Eddie who at this time is lost trying to find answers and not really a scientific observation to his experiments where he will not get the answer he desperately needs Mason is great. You can love him or hate him. He's needed in this picture not for just exposition reasons but to bring a grounded perspective that this film desperately needs. Mason and Arthur test out the drug in what we will call the blackout scene. Mason witnesses the blackout that Eddie has while taking the drug and after experiences of looking at another world, Mason introduces Eddie and Arthur to a new sleep deprivation tank. Eddie gets a new deprivation tank, you know, the kind that we know about now. And of course, in a pivotal scene, Eddie experiences a bad trip where he states he is enjoying the taste of a goat. Eddie is found with blood on his face and a look of someone who just came out of a seizure. 
Eddie cannot speak, coming out of the tank and demands to be tested. He wants x-rays on an MRI scan and is taken to be x-rayed and where his x-ray results reveal they has been altered to what Eddie has stated as being a quasi semen after a night of passion with another woman besides Emily which I would assume to be a student at a university after the loving Eddie does start transforming physically three months later Eddie reunites with Emily and is obsessed more with Emily's research and especially the recording of the monkeys and we as an audience know he wants to compare what he's saying in the tank with what the primates are saying. Eddie decides to go on his own to complete his already altered state. He does experience the transformation and gives a security guard a beatdown and is found naked at the zoo the next morning. This does cause an uproar between friends and Emily. Emily listens to the early tapes of Eddie in the deprivation tank and realizes that it's not Eddie but a primate she is hearing, you know, like the ones she just left Africa. Emily coerces the doctor to go for the one last trip into the tank and of course we open a gateway to another dimension. Emily saves Eddie from being sucked into the vortex which is depicted by laundry soap and early special effects. Eddie, don't go down that drain. Eddie, comfortable in the arms of Emily, confesses he is willing to make their relationship work. It does take some men longer to mint and grow up, if you will, into the responsibility that has been bestowed upon them. Eddie, face it, you've had a wonderful life and you sacrificed that good life to go searching for something that has already been attained and that is joy. The joy of having a family, a joy of having the love of a good woman. Some people are graced with a good life, for instance, like us Americans, who by the grace of God is one of the greatest countries in the world. And we go tramping around the world to look for something we have already obtained. Eddie is us and scientists know there are answers out there that they cannot be explained by microscope or petri dish. The film concludes with Emily turning into the human torch and preventing Eddie from regressing into the homo sapien that he does not need to be but an adult creature with the responsibility of a man. They embrace the end. What really sticks out in this film is the ritual with the Native Americans, the ending where his girlfriend turns into the human torch, the scene where our protagonists experience their first altered state scene in the isolation tank whenever Mason talks, the soundtrack was up for an Academy Award, and the author of the book, which the movie is about, was also an award winner. Ken Russell was not the first choice as director. Where was this film? This was filmed in New York. Uh, one of the places is uh, the Bronx Zoo, Boston, Massachusetts, uh, Los Angeles, California, and in Mexico. The search for God is the search for love. The search for acceptance for that joy in one's life. The eternal happiness. If you think this is just a science fiction movie, I guess you could say that. But most of all, it has been said to be a love story. The movie is based on the novel by the same name. And of course, just like most authors, he hated the film of his adaptation of his work. Patty Chavsky, the author of Altered States, sold the rights of the film to Paramount for a million and while writing the novel, he suffered a heart attack. Chavsky finally compromised with Ken Russell on the film because Ken had such difficulties with the dialogue on the film. Chavsky was told he would have to direct the film himself if he wanted to get rid of Russell because the film had been passed from director to director already. The studio heads at this time were already tired of the whole ordeal he took his name off the film, Chavsky did, and here you would see why if you got rid of religion it would not stop fighting. Here are two grown men fighting over a Hollywood film. That is a great way to segue into the topic of what an altered state of consciousness is and the science, if you will, behind it. Religion has been the world since time began. It is a check and balance for man. There are questions that plague and haunt man every day. Why is there war? Why is there love? Why is there hate, envy, pride, and jealousy? Religious experiences have been detailed in history, but to explain them is mind-boggling to some scientists. There's meditation for one, and of course mind-altering drug theories to explain religious experiences. We know about LSD experiments in the past and meditation connected to Hinduism, and these are two explanations scientists use to try to explain why someone would have a religious experience, but have failed to do so. I will give you some sound advice that there are things that cannot be explained and that's the way it is. You waste your time like Eddie in trying to find out 
why you are experiencing these things just such as pain of the past or just let go and experience forgiveness. I want justice. By God, I want justice. But sometimes you have to let go and live your life and put faith in the peace that surpasses all understanding. Who's your daddy? 